One of my favorite people to follow on Twitter is Saskatchewan Premier Brad Wall. Not just because he's got a great sense of humor, but because he tweets interesting facts I don't generally get in the rest of the mainstream media. Like this Twitter tweet showing extraordinary Saskatchewan exports to foreign countries. Now, I thought that those figures were over a seven-year period of time, like tens of billions of dollars. You can see the growth in Saskatchewan exports, but no, that's on an annual basis. I can't believe these numbers, and I'm thrilled to have the Premier himself join us now via Skype from his office in Regina. Great to see you, Premier. Thanks, Ezra. Well, thanks very much for being here. I want to talk about Saskatchewan's exports because I, I didn't quite understand the numbers on your tweet. I thought that those were over a seven-year period of time. Saskatchewan was exporting $30 billion, but, but it's $35 billion per year. That's incredible. It is incredible. Credit goes to the economy. Uh, credit goes to our entrepreneurs in the province and our our companies that are here. Some of them fairly large. Uh, we have uh, we've tried to support them with an international engagement program that was uh, pretty folk. I hope it was focused. It was certainly very deliberate and what we felt to be lacking prior to the 07 election. And so that has meant that uh, that we've engaged in trade missions and, you know, not for the sake of travel, but in and out of markets together with companies. And as you will know, Ezra, in Asia, especially where we've sought to diversify our export interests, the state to state relationship for good or for ill is is important. They want to meet the companies, but they'd also like to meet uh, the government. And so but we have engaged in these things and you know our our growth rate since 07 in exports has far exceeded the national growth rate it's it's almost doubled um and especially in asia the numbers are biblically proportioned we we are responsible for almost 40 percent of canada's exports to india and of course that is a very fast growing large emerging economy very similar numbers in indonesia very similar uh growth numbers across the asean region uh, all of that region and, and what we're exporting to these areas, and, and what the, it's, it's not the government, what our exporters are, are exporting to these areas, of course, are basically fertilizer, food, and, and energy. In this fast-growing region of the world, in, in Asia, uh, they prize food security and energy security. And it's our view, and it was since 07, that uh, you know, that, that's just our business. That's what we have to offer uh, the world. And so uh, we've made uh, that to be the centerpiece of, of uh, our trade missions, of our international promotion. I think sometimes governments want to promote everything, um, you know, when on these trade missions and then intervening in the intervening period between trade missions. And we've tried to have some focus and some corporate company support. Uh, and, you know, it's worked well. Not again, not credit the government, but credit our farmers and, uh, and their associations and also the companies and entrepreneurs that are that are selling a lot of products around the world. You know, people uh, know I'm an enthusiast and they might be saying, oh, you're just being effusive. But let me tell you why I am blown away. I mean, take the number thirty five billion dollars per year. I mean, there's about a million souls in Saskatchewan. I don't know the exact count. That is thirty thousand dollars per Saskatchewan person, I mean, a family of four on average is exporting more than one hundred and twenty grand worth of stuff every year. Is there any other province that said like that? You guys export more to non-U.S. customers than even Alberta. Let me say that again. Saskatchewan, a third or a quarter of the population, exports more to non-U.S. customers than Alberta. That's amazing. I've never heard that before. That's amazing. We are, that's, ab that's absolutely correct. And we have just recently surpassed Alberta. We are, by the way, 1.13 million uh, people, and, and as you know, for us, population is a big deal. And so, when you do the math, you're, you're right in terms of a per capita basis. There's no uh, province that exports more than us. Uh, we uh, surpassed Ontario in this regard. Uh, we also, uh, actually, we surpassed Ontario with respect to the export of food, uh, which was a long-standing fact uh, in the country. And We'd actually need to add a bit more value in here. Again, I don't mean government getting involved and picking winners and losers, but we need to have the right policies in place to attract companies to add more value to food. But even as it is, this is a very fast-growing segment. The only province in Canada that's, uh, that is that uh, has a lesser dependency on the United States uh, is uh, British Columbia. Uh, they have a longer-standing relationship with many parts of Asia, and that has served them well. I America will be our, our largest partner, and uh, and this is a, not a bad thing. It's a good thing. There are friends and there are partners, and so we we very much tend to that relationship as well. We have representation in Washington, and and but it, the state-to-state -state thing's not necessary there. It's, it's commerce. 
In Asia, it's different. In Asia, there is a role for government uh, to be able to uh, to engage in the markets. And, you know, I, I need to credit Prime Minister Harper. One of the biggest success stories in exports, if I may very quickly, uh, uh, Ezra, has been the export of uranium from our province. Right. The two most robust civilian nuclear programs on Earth is China and India. And our uranium was not uh, getting into that market. We did not have a nuclear cooperation agreement with either country. Australia did. So they were moving their uranium in, but we, we did not. Uh, the Prime Minister made this a personal priority. Uh, he did it in both countries. Recently, we were with uh, he and Prime Minister Modi to sign a seven million pounds of uranium deal to India, where they are building six more reactors and more on the books. 50 million pounds will be sold into China in the next 12 years for their civilian uh, program. And this would not be happening were it not for the company Cameco, but the Prime Minister. Uh, most of the uranium in Canada, if not all of it's in Saskatchewan, we only have 14 seats, so there has not been the interest from other federal governments. I need to say very publicly that Prime Minister Harper made it a priority, so did we as a government, and this has resulted in huge opportunities opening for this energy, uh, CO2 free, if that's your thing, free energy for those, uh, for, for in terms of that, that whole debate. Uh, in countries that are otherwise building coal plants. Yeah, I, I like to note that Patrick Moore, the co-founder of Greenpeace, is very pro-nuclear for the reason you just said. I mean, if you're worried about particulate pollution or CO2, uh, nuclear is the way to go. Uh, I also note, and, and you know, there's been a lot of free trade agreements uh, signed in Asia over the last seven years, but I want to talk about one more thing. I'm thinking of the things you just mentioned, agriculture, potash, uranium, things like that, much of that moves by rail. So it's going, I understand how it gets to port, but Saskatchewan in its own way has also been a victim of the anti-pipeline propaganda, the regulatory snarls, the environmental extremists. In your case, it's more the delay of the Keystone XL pipeline, taking all that Bakken oil and gas to, to market. Uh, in our last moments, give me your thoughts on pipelines and how they're important for Saskatchewan. They're essential. We wouldn't have actually any Saskatchewan oil in the Keystone, but you're quite right. Anything that eases capacity uh, in the Bakken, and 17% or so of the oil in Keystone will be light, sweet crude for the Bakken south of the border. But anything that helps uh, uh, ease the capacity situation there helps us because there's too many rail cars full of oil in Canada and the United States. Today, the American Railway Association did a report last December uh, that uh, measured the number of rail cars full of oil in 2008. Uh, at, at under 10,000, and now it's uh, in the hundreds of thousands. And so that tells you that more oil is moving by rail, and, and rail cars are not, uh, is certainly an option, but the most effective way to do it, not perfect, but the most effective, the safest, is a pipeline, and it's hugely important to us. Energy East is a big deal for us, Ezra. I'm worried a little bit about that. You probably heard us engage with our counterparts in Ontario and Quebec. We need to displace foreign oil that you have pointed out that, that people should know is coming into this country because... We don't get Western Canadian oil to the to the to the East Coast. That's just dumb, and we need to fix that so that we are truly energy independent. Uh, let me just educate myself a bit. So, so the Keystone XL would not pick up Saskatchewan oil. No, it, it'll it'll uh, come through the southwest corner of the province. There'll be construction jobs, but the on ramp for back in oil for that crude uh, that'll be part of that uh, will be. Uh, in Montana and North Dakota, right. that oil. But the, 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 we have capacity issues through the bucket, through the entire formation, right. uh, and anything that keeps uh, oil off of a rail car, even at state side, uh, it, it's it's the congestion that is uh, that we have to deal with. So it's something we've strongly supported, and I hope I hope uh, we'll see continued support from Alberta. Certainly, that'll be from us as well. Got it. So that'll free up rail cars also for the other goods so Saskatchewan is trying to sell. I can't let you go without asking you for your thoughts about the new government in Alberta. Now, I know you're a collegial premier and, and you're a great diplomat. You broke the NDP stranglehold on your province that unleashed this economic dragon. Now there's worries in Alberta that that same creeping regulation, taxation, anti-industrial bias may have crossed the border. I know you're a best foot forward kind of guy, so I won't ask you to comment specifically on the new premier, but if you had a lesson or a message or a hope to tell Albertans based on Saskatchewan's experience with the NDP, what would you tell your friends to the West? Well, if they asked, and I only would have offered if they asked. First of all, I'd say, I should say I've already talked to Premier Notley and offered to be uh, of any help that we could possibly be. I had a similar offer from premiers when I first got elected in 
uh, Premier Dewar was, in fact, one of the first ones to make an offer to, you know, to, if I had any questions, that he, he'd be there. And so I wanted to make that offer. I also wanted to encourage the Premier that Alberta might stay in the new West partnership because it's starting to build some, some, some success, a critical mass in terms of being a large free trade zone, one business registry right across the region, uh, the harmonization of regulations that make it easier to do business, cooperating on, on federal issues, speaking with one voice on behalf of Western Canadians. So I hope they'll stand. She was... Uh, just brand new and said, well, I, I, she said, I hear you and we'll look at that. Uh, I would also point out to any government, whether it's in Alberta, uh, and I, I, we have to remind ourselves of this, Ezra, and that is that taxes are one thing and we need to always be working to, we want to move taxes in a more competitive way, including to get our corporate income tax down. But, but, but taxes are not the only thing. We've got to make sure as provincial economies and go governments that we are watching uh, uh, the issues, uh, the, the, the overburden with respect to regulation, that we're watching our labor legislative environment. We moved on these things early, um, and I think it's helped. We've had industry tell us it's helped. We have labor peace, by the way. We haven't, uh, you know, for the most part, certainly, I think that would be a fair assessment. And so uh, some of the dire predictions of labor legislative changes have not come true. And, uh, and, and this is important to remember. Taxes are important, but government can, can get in the way of job creators through regulation, through the labor legislative environment, and that would be my advice, not just to her, but to ourselves and to anyone else uh, that was uh, happened to be uh, crazy enough to ask me for my opinion. <laughs> I don't want to uh, ask you about the details of your obviously confidential conversation, but did the subjects of oil, gas, oil sands, or pump pipelines, did that come up, and is there anything you can give us uh, to shed light on the new Premier's views? No, it, uh, it didn't. It was a very brief conversation. I wanted to congratulate her and offer uh, to uh, work uh, together. Uh, and then I encourage her, her government to, to remain within the new U.S. partnership with B.C. and Saskatchewan. Uh, and we hope that's the case. Uh, I've heard some discussion and not from the government there, but some discussion, some speculation about whether or not there will be now more a national view from Alberta with respect to potential energy and that, that confluence of energy in the environment, those policies. Um, you know, I, that, that would be a concern to us. Alberta can 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 have uh, whatever position they want, but I hope uh, I hope we can have a good discussion about that at the upcoming premiers meeting. All of the provinces we would like to have made in Saskatchewan solutions. We want to make sure that we are that oil and gas are developed in a sustainable way. That energy development is happening with respect to the environment. But we also uh, we don't want to undertake things that we know will will kneecap our economy, which is. You know, it's been rocked a little bit by low oil prices. We see some resilience and diversity, but we need to make sure we are uh, continuing to move Saskatchewan forward economically. And, and I don't think ceding important, uh, uh, um, not just jurisdiction, but uh, ceding policy uh, to, uh, to a federal government with respect to energy and the environment uh, is necessarily risk-free. In fact, I'd argue it's the opposite for our economy. Right, and I would say the Constitution, Section 92A, clearly says... It's a provincial matter, too. Listen, Premier, you've been very generous with your time. Thank you so much. I hate to say it, but I believe that Saskatchewan is the last brightly burning light for economic freedom in Canada. We're relying on you, my friend, to keep this country going. Great to talk with you today. Thanks for your time. All the best to the rebel.